This video will discuss the molecular orbital electron configurations of homonuclear diatomic molecules from the first two rows of the periodic table. So the molecules that we're going to be interested in are all the way from hydrogen to neon, homonuclear diatomics, H2, helium-2, lithium-2, beryllium-2, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So it's going to be two different sets of diagrams here, one that applies from hydrogen up to nitrogen, and one that applies from oxygen to neon. So we discussed in the previous video that our 1s orbitals overlap to form 1 sigma g and 1 sigma star u bonding and antibonding orbitals. The 2s orbitals overlap to form 2 sigma g and 2 sigma u star bonding and antibonding orbitals. Then we have in the 2p level the 2pz orbitals combine to form the 3 sigma g and 3 sigma u star bonding and antibonding orbitals. And the 2px and 2py orbitals combine to form two sets of 1 pi u bonding and 1 pi g star antibonding orbitals. So the difference between these two diagrams comes into play when we're talking about the positioning of 1 pi u and 3 sigma g. On the left, for these seven diatomic molecules, 3 sigma g is above 1 pi u. And for these three molecules on the right, 3 sigma g is, is lower in energy than 1 pi u. More on that later. All right, so these are going to form an orbital energy diagram. So we're going to take however many electrons each atom brings into the molecule, set those on the sides, and then we're just going to start filling up the diagram from lowest energy to highest energy the same way we would any electron orbital diagram we've been shown since general chemistry. So for H2, they each have one electron, so there's going to be two total electrons. Those just fill up the one sigma g bonding orbital. So the ground state electron configuration of the H2 molecule is one sigma g2. So this is going to work very similar to the way that things work for atoms, except for we're using these orbitals instead of 1s and 2s, etc. For helium, we have four electrons, two from each individual helium atom. So we fill up the 1 sigma g and 1 sigma u star bonding and antibonding orbitals. 1 sigma g2, 1 sigma u star 2. Notice that there's an equal number of electrons in the bonding and antibonding orbitals. Thus, this noble gas doesn't prefer to strongly interact, doesn't really prefer to bond. All right, going on to lithium. Um, the, I use this brackets helium-2 here, indicating that that's preceded by this configuration. I haven't actually seen anyone use that. I don't know if that's a convention or not. But by the time I get to the bottom of this page, I ran out of space. So I'm just using that more for convenience rather than for indicating that it's a notation that people frequently use. Lithium-2, there's three electrons from each, from each atom. So they fill up one sigma g, one sigma u star, and then two sigma g. Uh, that continues with beryllium where we add in two sigma u star. And then for boron-2, we start filling up the pi u level, so one electron here, one there, so two spin up electrons in different uh, orbitals for this one pi u level. For our so for our boron two, we have one pi u two, and preceded by the beryllium configuration. Then for carbon, we add two more electrons to one pi u. So for carbon, it has beryllium one pi u four. So note there are two orbitals in pi u, so there are going to be four electrons that can fit in those four spin orbitals in those two spatial orbitals. Um, N2 is the last one that we'll have on this diagram, which is what I have drawn in here. Three electrons each from the 2p level, filling up four electrons in 1 pi u and two in 3 sigma g. Then at oxygen, the 3 sigma g and 1 pi u switch ordering, and we add, in an, we add in another electron pair. Those start to fill 1 pi g star, so 1 pi u 4, 1 pi g star 2. For fluorine, we add two more electrons into 1 pi g star, 
giving us 1 pi u4, 1 pi g star 4. And lastly, for neon, we have the uh, final electrons filling up the 3 sigma u star for this final electron configuration of diatomic neon. So we'll discuss more about these in future videos. One last point of note before we go, um, this 3 sigma g going below pi u. So as we go from the left to right here, our nuclei are getting stronger and stronger in their magnitude of their charge. So the charge of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we discussed in some videos how s orbitals have have a lower effect of shielding relative to p orbitals. That s orbitals feel more of the effective charge than p orbitals. So it just so happens that the location at which this 3 sigma g uh, starts to feel the nuclei more than this 1 pi u, where these energy levels switch, the switch just so happens to happen at nitrogen. But these are in fact getting closer together all the way as you go along this, along this level. So this is primarily a shielding effect due to the, ver the difference in, in nuclear distance in 2pz versus 2px and y. But that's why that shift happens. It's mainly a shielding effect. And that's kind of just something you have to memorize, um, just that there are two different diagrams and that the switch occurs between nitrogen and oxygen, and that oxygen is the one that puts the 3 sigma g below the 1 pi u.